Good afternoon to you. Mark Sada, HurricaneTrack.com. It's Friday, the 5th of November, 2021. Time for the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion. Even though we're not going to be discussing any hurricanes today, part of what I do is also cover other high-impact weather events, and we got a big one to talk about today. But there is, you know, some interest still in the tropics. It's still November, still hurricane season. Remember, it does last for six months, June 1st through November 30th. Even though things are certainly going to be winding down, climatologically speaking, of course, the Atlantic pretty much wound down after Sam. We do have Wanda still out there, but, you know, things kind of fell off a cliff in October. So we were going to we're going to just kind of gradually move into maybe not even gradually, as we talked about a big storm a couple of weeks ago for the northeast. Now we're going to have one for the southeast U.S. I guess we're just going to move right on into off season type weather mid-latitude storms, that kind of thing, so let's get on with it, shall we? Still have some hurricane stuff to talk about, at least tropics. There's Wanda, way up in the northern latitude, still hanging on as a 50-mile-per-hour tropical storm. The uh, days and time, etc., it's all limited here. Wanda will eventually move back out over cooler water, become post-tropical, and that will be that. In the eastern Pacific, go back to the home page here, we have dwindling 18E really didn't do much. It's not going to do much. Not going to worry about it much at all. Maybe it becomes a tropical storm later as it finds better conditions out farther to the west. So you folks here in southern Mexico, no worries about TD18 in the eastern Pacific whatsoever. This other system may go on to develop also, but it'll stay far enough out in the open Pacific as well. Really, really unusual to see this in November. I have to admit, kind of a strange thing. We had Pamela, we had Rick, TD18 out here, which may eventually develop into a name storm. This is trying to develop, and we had nothing over here in the Western Caribbean. Very bizarre. Maybe we'll figure out why later on. I can't do it today. Don't have time. we got other stuff to talk about. So there's that. All right, so the satellite imagery putting it into motion here from Tropical Tidbits. There's the high chance development area in the eastern Pacific. There's TD-18E, and that's about it. Just trades blowing through the Caribbean. No areas of organized deep convection. Just a little bit of a surface trough through here with some showers and thunderstorms uh, butting up against Central America. Otherwise, the tropical Atlantic, the tropical Atlantic part is very quiet. There's just the very edge of Wanda up there way in the northern latitudes where I covered that. So we'll just leave it at that. The next area of interest is a non-tropical system here over the Gulf of Mexico, this developing storm that's going to cross Florida tonight, move into the southwest Atlantic, and really cause a lot of problems. We're going to see similar impacts, and that is what we focus on here. When it's hurricane season, we talk about the impacts. We try to not worry so much about the category and all of these man-made labels that we have to put on things, and it's a good thing, I get it. Not trying to besmirch our labeling system as a human species here, but you know, we get away from the old category thing. Well, if it's not a category three, four, or five, I don't care. You know, we try to look at that in terms of, you know, what to expect and how to respect the impacts from tropical systems. Well, the same is true for these mid latitude extra tropical storms that are not of tropical origin. They don't have names. The winter storms will, but that's a whole different story, something that the Weather Channel does. It's not an official National Weather Service thing. But the hurricanes get the names. The tropical storms get the names. From an official standpoint, these big mid-latitude storms, they don't. They do over in Europe. They'll say Storm Jennings or whatever, just making it up. Maybe there was a Storm Jennings. Uh, but they do do that. The UK met. Um, anyway, I'm kind of getting off track here, but... We don't name them, and so they're not quite as, you know, oh, there's a big coastal storm. And like I said, with the exception of the Weather Channel, that'll name winter storms as part of their marketing campaign. And yes, it does bring awareness to it. It's not an official thing, and so people don't tend to pay as much of attention, I guess. Um, maybe they do on social media, because you do have people from teenagers to adults that post 10-foot snow maps from the Euro snow, uh, 10 to 1 ratio output or whatever. You know, so maybe there is more awareness than I'm aware of, but from an official standpoint, these extra tropical storms not being named, it's harder 
to draw attention to them. And believe me, this one's going to have some impacts here as it goes up off the coast, uh, coming out of the warm Gulf of Mexico. You know, you do this pattern a few times more over the next three months, and we're going to get some major winter storm action along the East Coast. This has me kind of intrigued. Is this just a couple of systems? We had the one, uh, again, 10 days ago or whatever it was, two weeks ago, something like that, that impacted up here, drifted south, etc., and became Wanda. This one's coming up out of the Gulf. You get some Arctic air to come pouring in. Let's get Arctic air's color to at least be blue. Uh, from the Canadian area with the northern jet combining with the southern jet, and we can have some interesting shenanigans going on later on as we get into winter. But we're in fall, and so we're not quite there yet. It's going to be a rain event. Rain could be very heavy. Two inches expected here in Wilmington at least. That's my area, Wilmington, North Carolina. Other areas are going to have similar rainfall totals. There's going to be coastal flooding. There's already coastal flooding. We're at this perigean high tide area, astronomical high tide, where the moon is closest to the Earth in its orbit. And so that's extra gravity and pull, etc. on, well, it's extra pull. Maybe the gravity's more, but <laughs> I guess you do have to have extra gravity if there's going to be extra pull. But you get the idea. There's everything coming together for this to be a pretty big impact event for a large area. And because it's not tropical storm whatever or hurricane whatever, maybe some people aren't necessarily paying attention. You know, why would they? You have a billion other things trying to get your attention. So that's what we're here for. That's what I'm here for, to keep you engaged. And here it is, the sunshine state. I told you yesterday, just take today off. Maybe tomorrow, too, in some areas. Wish it could be that simple. Yeah, send a letter. You know, maybe I could tweet at the governor and say, Hey, Ron, Ron DeSantis just shut Florida down for the day, weather-wise. Probably can't do that, though. Too many political undertones there. But you get the idea. It's a miserable day. People at the parks, people at the beaches, etc. It's just not pleasant. Not everywhere, but most places. Maybe the panhandle is still in pretty good shape. But that's a big storm, big energy maker, big energy consumer of the warm water coming out of the Gulf of Mexico here. I've talked about that. Those anomalous warm water temperatures, the same thing over here. Water temperatures running above average, so there's a lot of energy to tap into as this storm system takes shape. So here are some of the areas, area forecast discussions, area uh, WFOs we call these, weather forecast offices. This is Tampa Bay, special marine warning currently just outside of the bay, so some action moving in there. Go back to the radar real quick. Yeah, there's a storm right there. You know what? Hey, I do this recording it live. Let's zoom in. Let's find Tampa Bay. Bingo, there it is. This is Mark Nissenbaum's dashboard. And, oh, yeah, look at that coming into Tampa Bay as I put this together. Um, a squall line there, a little heavier action moving in uh, closer to, to the Sarasota area, so south of St. Petersburg between there and Sarasota. Pretty nasty. By the time you see this on YouTube, it would have moved in. But there you go. This is what I'm talking about. This energy coming in, you know, every much the same types of impacts that you get from a named tropical system. High wind, heavy rain. You get some of these that have a lot of outflow to them. And you can have a little bit of a mini storm surge. Sometimes people call that a meteo tsunami. Just another label people come up with. It's just sort of a very temporary push of water as you get these gust fronts and whatnot that act to kind of create a small-scale storm surge, that can be problematic. Lots of people with boats down there. You know, there could be some lightning in there. you got to be very aware of this, even though it's not a named tropical storm. This is a good case in point regarding that. Elsewhere, we look over on the east coast of Florida, and we'll just slide over that way, especially up towards the northeast coast. You've got coastal flood warnings. The purple, that's a storm warning. And that goes right up to the coastline. And storm warning, we're here, you know, we're talking 60 knots, 70 mile per hour wind possible. And if you click on this map, it's a really neat interactive map if you've never used it from the National Weather Service. You just go to weather.gov. You can either click on the map or you can put in a zip code or a city name right up here in these little blank areas. 
and you get what you're looking for. And look, very windy Saturday, coastal flood warning, high surf advisory, all kinds of multiple hazards in effect as the little information call out says there. And some of these gusts as high uh, as 24 miles per hour, 37 tonight. And we move on to Saturday, let's see, 39 miles per hour tomorrow. That's tropical storm force, but right in the offshore waters, yes, there are storm warnings in effect. And you can even click on that, and it'll tell you where. Storm warning in effect, and a gale warning for certain areas as well. As well. Uh, some gusts up to 50 knots, that's 60 miles per hour. So not quite 70 miles per hour, my bad. Uh, but they can include that. It's just up to hurricane force, which of course is 64 knots, and seas 11 to 16 feet. That's pretty significant. And again, it's Florida. A lot of boaters out there. Got to be mindful. Got to be careful. Got to be aware. Because if you're dead, you can't watch this video. Seriously. It's all about keeping you aware and plugged into the weather. So those watches and warnings and advisories extend down the coast. Millions of people in the area that's going to be affected and that extends up into eastern North Carolina. But before we get there, let me just slide this over. Charleston Harbor, look, tomorrow uh, on the tide area between the 2 p.m. and 2 a.m. Well, let's just reverse it here. 2 a.m. to 2 p.m. tomorrow, there's going to be a peak high tide, at least forecast by the overall numerical guidance, 8.6 feet. That gets us into major flood stage. Where? at the Charleston Harbor. You ever been down to that area? There's the uh, market, you know, the marketplace down there, that long city market. That'll flood if you get enough water, especially if it's raining and you get the storm drains backed up. Lots of people want to go down to Chucktown and enjoy the area, you know, and this could be problematic. Uh, you're not getting anywhere near, you're still four feet shy of Hugo, which is up there at the record, yeah, but it's in major flood category for an area that's normally very busy. So this has economic impacts, all right? Because it's going to cause problems. May, it may shoo people away. They may close streets. You know, you can have vehicles that flood out, saltwater damage. You know, the weather is a big deal, even when it's not a named storm. Then in my neck of the woods, same kind of thing. It's just starting to ramp up here in the overall guidance. This is farther downstream right so it takes a little longer in time farther out in time or further out in time whatever it's called uh, that we'll see the watches and warnings increase for the outer banks of North Carolina but as it stands gale warning in effect coastal flood advisory along the sound and river sides here where the mainland is but out on the outer banks high surf advisory and a coastal flood watch I fully expect that the coastal flood watch here which is for this area through here more than likely it's kind of blended in with all these other ones, will be upgraded to a coastal flood warning. And I suspect that the usual areas that get impacts will see significant overwash. People are going to get stuck out there probably. A lot of fishermen go down to the Outer Banks and take advantage of it uh, being less crowded this time of year. And you know the areas, Rodanthe, Merlot Beach, Ocracoke, not so much the northern Outer Banks, but certainly south of Oregon Inlet, that could be a big problem in this inst in Instagraphic. Maybe if you put it on Instagram, I'm just excited today, so to speak. Lots of energy talking about this, so I have to slow down. Infographic. It is instantly available, but it's an infographic, and it shows you significant coastal flooding, right? Very easy to understand this. Color-coded red, red. Uh, orange for the coastal wind impacts, that could change to significant. And then the heavy rainfall kind of limited, thank goodness. This is going to be a wind and coastal flooding event. And I already showed you this, so we'll can it. All right, on to this. Finally, I am making the very first episode of the Hurricane Highway Season 2 available publicly this evening. Um, and, you know, you might go behind my picture there before I put it up and kind of cheat and figure out the URL. That's fine. I want you to see it, but I'm going to release it later this evening with a tweet and make the YouTube status public. Uh, this is funded, this series, uh, through Patreon. This is what part of what the patron support 
allows me to do. It helps to cover my time, my expenses, the field missions that result in these extraordinary scenes and stories that I tell through this series. It's our own version of something that you might see on a streaming service. Well, we have our own streaming service. It's called YouTube. It's called Amazon Prime Video. Eventually, this will get on Amazon Prime Video like I have several of my titles now. Hurricane Highway Season 1 is on there, uh, as are Tracking the Hurricanes 2017 and 2018. Now, a thing about that real quick, Amazon, unfortunately, because I'm not a major studio, they switched their rules around in the last year or so. I can't remember exactly when. And I can't make those included with Prime. I would love for these to be free for the public once I produce them because they are supported already through the crowdfunding of Patreon. So there's no reason for me to monetize these, so to speak. I'm dead serious. I've already been paid. You know, there's a whole list of producers and supporters in the end credits of these episodes. And so it's a little irritating, um, but I guess I understand it if all these sort of independent creators that aren't from studios flood Amazon Prime with free content, Amazon still has to pay for that bandwidth. I know, right? Cry me a river. But it's serious. And then they still have to pay royalties for nothing, so to speak. And so I have to charge money, unfortunately. It's mandated on Amazon Prime. Uh, but it's a good way to continue to support what I'm doing if you want to. They are on Amazon Prime if you choose to watch a couple of the episodes or, or um, feature-length films that I have there from 2017 and 2018, and then season one of The Hurricane Highway again on Amazon Prime. But they're all on YouTube. You can look this up on YouTube. There are various playlists. You can search Tracking the Hurricanes, 0405, 16, 17, 18. And then Hurricane Highway Season 1 is a playlist, all eight episodes. Season 2, I'm going to give you just a little short preview here of Season 2 real quick. Got to get the uh, volume on. This is how it opens, crowdfunded through Patreon. You know what? It's probably not going to do any sound because the sound is running through my microphone system. Whatever, but this is what the visual looks like. And there's a great soundtrack in there. You can only imagine... Yes, it's going to be available uh, this evening. I'll make it public on YouTube, and I'm very proud of this. I've got four episodes done. So over the next probably every two weeks to give me some time, I'll put out a new episode publicly. They're all four already available on Patreon because they support it. You understand? So they get to see this stuff first. Then I make it publicly available later, later at no charge, no monetization. Uh, you know, YouTube might put an ad next to it or something, but I don't put commercials or overlays on my YouTube videos. Uh, if one slips past me, I try to go correct it. But anyway, it's going to be available tonight, so check it out. The first episode of Season 2 of The Hurricane Highway. Very happy with it, and I hope you get to uh, uh, watch it. And where's the title? It comes in here somewhere. Hold on. There it is. The original series trying to find it. It's hard to skip through. There it is. There it is. There's the title screen, The Hurricane Highway. Nice opening shot, right? Yeah, it's getting a little bit more professional. There's episode one, and it's called Alternate Reality, and you'll see why. And if you remember where we left off at episode eight of season one, that title is perfect. All right, one more thing that I'll let you go. We're getting a bike. Yeah, that's going to be the new Hurricane Track vehicle. Or maybe not. I put this post out yesterday on Patreon. It is publicly available. I'll put this link in the description of today's video. It's a publicly accessible link. And what is it? Well, we're going to crowdfund a new vehicle. Maybe the down payment only. Maybe the whole thing. And this was just very cute and fun. I liked that. A fundraiser, if you will. Drop the D. Um, and... Uh, uh, it was suggested by one of our patrons, Karen, Karen Pollock from down in Florida, if you don't mind me using your name. And, you know, instead of, uh, you know, all kind of serious and stoic and, you know, let's raise some money, come on, let's make it fun. What are we going to do? We're going to get Mark and his team a bike? Well, if we don't raise but a few hundred dollars, then, yeah, we're going to get a bike. 
But we know that it's going to be more successful than that because we've got really good support. I mean, look, I'm able to produce the equivalent of a television series, for goodness sakes. So we're doing all right. We can get a little bit more funding. Maybe we can get one of these guys, possibly. They don't do real well with leg room and high wind and certainly flooding. Or we can get a little bit more funding and with a few modifications, this might be doable. But you know what? This is kind of what I'm thinking. A Toyota Tundra or maybe a Ford F-150. Maybe we're looking at things. Maybe a, a Forerunner. Those are all good vehicles looking at more than likely a lease over the next few years instead of a purchase because, you know, who knows what's going to be going on three years from now. Or somebody drops a big old six-figure donation. We'll get something like that or the equivalent, right? Seriously, it's all up to you. That is the beauty of the crowd part of crowdfunding is you shape the future. So it's all in here. I'll lay it out. I'll put the um, the link in the description. We're doing stuff through PayPal and Venmo or regular check or money order. A couple people are electing to do that because, yes, people still send checks through bill pay or whatever. But seriously, we want to get a new vehicle. The old Chevy Tahoe been retired now uh, for three years and I've been renting ever since, ever since, and that gets expensive. It gets weird. You know, you reserve a nice vehicle, and you get there, and they're like, oh, sorry, we only have a Dodge Caravan or whatever. That happened to me one time. A couple of my colleagues have run into problems like that, too. Um, and you just never know with the way the pandemic and who knows what else. You remember this year was a nightmare, especially in the spring, renting vehicles. And I just want something that we can say, look, this is our vehicle. We crowdfunded it. We didn't worry or go after, so to speak, a dealer or a particular brand and say, hey, give us a vehicle, donate one, sponsor us. You guys do it. It's your project. You help to support this just by watching the video and sharing what I do. You help to support. Maybe you're not in the position financially or you just don't believe in crowdfunding. You think everything should be free. You've got that right. And I'm okay with that. It doesn't make me upset. The only thing that makes me upset is when people sort of attack this method, this entrepreneurship, because it's like you don't get us. You know, you don't get what we do and you attack it. It's very few people that do that, by the way. So I don't let it get under my skin too much. And why would I? Because the rest of you, it's absolutely fantastic what we have been able to do. And once again, when you see this later tonight, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's really amazing. So yeah, we're doing a vehicle campaign. Check out that link in today's description. And uh, if you're new to YouTube and you know my channel, if you're new to YouTube, wow, you're in for a shock. But um, my channel, hopefully not so much. Do like, subscribe, share. It'd be great to have you along for the, the long haul. You know, not just during hurricane season. We've got to grow this and take it to its full potential outside of the hurricane season. And then we will be ready when we do get those major hurricanes and even the minor ones will be all set thanks to you guys. All right. Have a great rest of your Friday and the weekend ahead. I'm actually going to be mulling whether or not to go to the Outer Banks and set some stuff up. So I may do an update tomorrow morning discussing those potential plans. I was just kind of thinking about it back at uh, this kind of stuff here. It's like, hmm, maybe I need to get up to the Outer Banks. We'll see. Anyway, let me get out of here and put this online. Have a great rest of your Friday. Thanks for watching. I'm Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com. We'll definitely talk again at some point over the weekend ahead.